Welcome to the NCAA March Madness post-game press conference featuring Creighton. We will be hearing from Christian Bishop first, followed by Coach Greg McDermott. We will be getting started momentarily. If possible, please check your settings and identify yourself by your name and affiliation when you are called on. Thank you. Welcome to the NCAA March Madness post-game press conference featuring Creighton. We'll be hearing from Christian Bishop first, followed by Coach Greg McDermott. We'll be getting started in a few minutes. If possible, please check your settings and identify yourself by your name and affiliation when you are called on. Thank you. All right, thank you for participating today. We're now joined by Christian Bishop and we'll begin the press conference. Use the raise hand function to indicate you would like to ask a question. When you are called on for your question, please state your name and affiliation first. Our first question comes from Matt Demarius. Uh, Matt Demarius, White and Blue Review. Hey, Christian. Uh... First of all, how are you feeling, man? Felt like you expended a lot of energy out there today. And then I guess, uh, what did it take to um, kind of keep punching back when they wouldn't go away? Yeah, I mean, that's a really tough team to play against. Those guys play hard. So uh, it feels good. It feels really good to step up to the line and um, hit those two big free throws. I know I've been practicing them every day. So it's just nice seeing the hard work pay off. All right, our next question comes from John. Yeah, John Neotawa with the uh, Omaha World Herald. Christian, I mean, did you ever envision you, you, you play a full season, the idea of it coming down to you at the free throw line? I wonder, like, did you ever, did that thought ever cross your mind this year? Yeah, I mean, like, this is whenever you're in the gym at midnight or whatever, just shooting around, you envision like three, two, one, you go and take the last shot. So it's fun seeing it come true and like, I've. I just took a step and uh, smelled the roses, honestly, when I was up there. I knew I practiced it before, so I was ready to hit the shots. Awesome. Again, I'd like to remind everyone to please use the raise hand function to indicate you would like to ask a question. Our next question comes from John Van Cannon. Hey, Christian, uh, congratulations on the win. What does it say about this team that when UC Santa Barbara goes on that 11-2 run to take the lead back that you guys didn't give in and, and were able to meet the fight and find a way? I feel like it shows a lot of resiliency from these guys. Uh, we were able to make plays down the stretch and play good defense at the end. So that took care of the rest of the game and brought us energy. Our next question comes from Matt. Matt Dean Marinus, White and Blue Review. Hey, Christian, uh, Denzel in the first half that that uh, 
that jump ball play where he's flexing and talking and um, it seemed like it gave you guys a jolt. I don't know if you remember that play or not. Yeah, not yeah. Did, that, did, <laughs> did that spark you guys? Because it seemed like you guys got quite a role in the first, in the first yeah, half. Yeah, definitely. When, when plays like that happen in the game, it, it's just like the little victories that give you a lot of energy to push through the rest of the game. So definitely got us going. All right, our next question comes from John. Yeah, John Niatawa with the World Herald. Um, just one more about the line, man. Like. I, that to me, I mean, it's just a pressure situation. You know, you said you kind of stopped and smelled the roses. Like, yeah, yeah what did go through your mind? Did you did it totally go blank? Or, I mean, how did you process all of that? No, I mean, yesterday when I was shooting free throws, I was like, why am I missing? Why am I missing? Like, and one of our coaches, Ty Nurse, he was just like, he's like, just tell yourself you're going to make it. Like, it's a mental thing. And so I just gave myself the confidence and I hit the shots. All right. Um, again, please use the raise hand function to indicate you would like to ask a question. All right, we will go to John Fantana. Christian, uh, for you, just just to enter this week, can you explain kind of what the last week had been like leading up to this game and what your guys' mentality was heading into this? You know, a week removed from that performance you had the, in the Big East title game to now put that away and do what you did today and get on the board in this tournament. Yeah, it was a really bad loss that we had against Georgetown, but um, we just had to put that aside and realize we're better than uh, how we played. And so just taking it a day at a time, and it's all about preparation. You prepare the right way, you're going to perform the right way. And so we did that correctly. Next question comes from John with the World Hair. Yeah, yeah, Christian, you, you guys have hard hedged and try to get the ball out of playmakers' hands all year, and you've been a big part in that. But yeah. just with, with this specific game plan, like how much effort did you have to expend trying to keep McLaughlin under control as he uh, navigated around those ball screens? Yeah, man, he's a quick, really good player. Um, but we got a lot of good guys like that in the NBA, or not in the NBA, but in the Big East. And, you know, uh, got to go against Marcus and Sharif every day in practice. They're just as fast as he is, so I was already prepared for it. Our next question comes from Matt. Um, when they uh, hit that, that initial 11-2 run, I know their run was a little bit bigger to get that six-point lead, but when they hit that initial 11-2 real quick after you guys went up 10, what, what were you guys telling yourselves, or what did you tell yourselves kind of in those huddles um, down the stretch to not let the moment kind of overwhelm you and let the game get away from you? Yeah, we knew that wasn't us. We just had to find our identity. And once we did that and we came together as a group, we knew we were, uh, could uh, succeed. And that's what we did. Our next question comes from John Fenton. Christian, what can you say in key moments in this game about the way Mitch Fatlock found a way to deliver for this team? Uh, I mean, the dude's shooting like 40 some percent from three-point line. Uh, we've seen him hit the craziest shots all year, and so we trust him. And he has the confidence to shoot the ball, and so when he shoots it, it goes in. And we're excited to see um, what he got to come because he keeps on doing it every game. All right, our next question comes from Matt. Matt, you're good to go ahead. Yeah, sorry, I actually just forgot to lower my hand. <laughs> All right, no worries. Sorry about that. Cool, well, then we'll go to John with the World Herald. Yeah, um, what was the locker room team, man? Uh, look, look, what did the locker room team look like? I mean, it's an emotional win. Any win in the NCAA tournament's big, but uh, you guys celebrate pretty good in there? Yeah, everybody's really excited. We celebrated, but then we just regrouped, and now we got to get prepared for our next game. Right. And our next question comes from John Fancy. Christian, uh, obviously everybody heartbroken about the way that last season ended, and you had this two-year wait for March Madness. Was it kind of fitting, you know, that, that in your first March Madness game of this run that it was decided, you know, in thrilling fashion? And what was the feeling like just uh, of this game and, and just maybe if there was a difference to the March Madness intensity of it? Yeah, I mean, all my life, people have been doubting me. And so uh, 
just being in the situation, I never thought I'd be here before. And so playing in March Madness is a dream come true. And being the one to hit the big shot at the end of the game was even better. So I'm excited to see what we got in store. Awesome. Our next question goes to John with the World Herald. Man, I can't let you go without asking about the res reverse two-hand dunk there. <laughs> Late, uh, you pulled one of them. You've had that's not the first time, right? This year, but what I mean, take us through that moment. I mean, you just kind of sort of recognize, oh, I got this is what I got to do, or how, how what led to that? I mean, I'd be envisioning stuff like that, so I'm like, like the game I did a windmill earlier in the season, all day before, I was like, I'm a windmill, I'm a windmill, and whenever I saw the opportunity, I was like, this is my time, and so I took advantage of it, and my legs had me, so I was good, it was able to do, I was able to do it. I'll remind people to please use the raise hand function if you have any further questions. Um, in the meantime, uh, could you tell us uh, your thoughts about advancing to the next round? Uh, I'm really excited. Uh, it's going to be a, even a harder matchup, so we just got to come prepare and uh, keep playing hard. I'm really excited about it, though. Awesome. Yep. John, did you have another question? John with the World Herald. Um, yeah, sure. I'll just ask Christian about kind of a, a grinder game like that with so much emotion and intensity like what do you feel like you're drained you know like how much energy does it take to just put it all out in the court like that for 40 minutes oh i mean we'd be running a lot more than that and they uh took advantage of that and they slowed the game down for us so my legs are good other guys in the locker room we're gonna be ready for our next game all right any further questions Okay. Thank you, Christian, for your time, and best of luck in the next round. Yep. We'll be joined momentarily by Coach Greg McDermott. Thank you very Please much. Please use this time to raise or lower your hands as necessary. Thanks, Good job, CB. We will now begin with an opening statement from Coach Greg McDermott and then go to questions. Again, please use the raise hand function to indicate you would like to ask a question. When you're called on for your question, please state your name and affiliation first. All right, Coach, please give a brief opening statement and we will go to questions. Well, just really proud of our team. Um, it, it certainly wasn't an easy game. And, uh, you know, Santa Barbara is really talented. And you know they, they were ready to play from the jump, and, and I thought they got us back on our heels early. Um, and when we finally kind of caught our second win, I thought we played better uh, at least the rest of the half. But just uh, you know they uh, they had us down, we had them down, and it was back and forth, and two good teams going at it. And you know I don't think either team probably shot the ball as well as, as they're accustomed to, but I think the two defenses had a, a lot to do with that. So. Uh, you know, Christian stepped up in a big time, and you know he's really worked on his free throw shooting over the course of the season. And you know, like I told him in the locker room, I hope when you're working on those free throws, you put yourself in the position you were in this afternoon uh, with a with a big game on the line. And he stepped up there and knocked them both down. And and uh, you know, we got a little lucky; they missed a layup down at the other end. Uh, and it takes a little bit of luck sometimes to advance in this tournament. Thank you. We will now go to questions from the media. Again, please use the raise hand function to indicate you would like to ask a question. Our first question comes from Mark or Matt. Sorry. Uh, Matt Nemarinas, White and Blue Review. Uh, Mac, I guess it seemed like uh, you guys were struggling to find any kind of a boost early in that first half. Um, how much of a catalyst was Christian's just effort on both ends of the floor to kind of give you guys a spark? I thought I thought Christian's second run, especially, uh, you know, when he came out, got a little bit break, and went in at that twelve-minute timeout. I thought he really elevated his game, and as a result, uh, got us back in the game uh, on both ends, both on the backboards. Uh, his ball screen coverage was elite today, um, and you know, then he got some big baskets for us as well. So you know, he, you know, we went with a little bit shorter bench. I think most teams do this time of year, uh, so those guys were out there a lot. Uh, but uh, you know, Christian Christian was terrific to play as much as he played and have to exert the energy he had he had to defensively uh, to get the dunk late and then the two big free throws as fatigued as he was is really a credit you know to the work that he's put in and the great condition that he's in. All right, our next question comes from John Fanta. Great, congrats on the win. Uh, when 
Santa Barbara goes on that 11-2 run to take the lead, you know, and you're reaching the home stretch of the game, you've talked about your team's mentality and the importance of it. What did you see in your team's mentality to punch back? Well, you know, we didn't. We don't, we don't ever quit, and uh, you know, and I think, I think the the possession that that really kind of sums up our team is that, you know, they I think they got two offensive rebounds on the same possession, maybe the fourth, the one of the last three or four possessions of the game, and we played pretty good defense for 25 seconds. They missed a shot. We had to reset the defense. I mean, we were on defense for about a minute. Um, and they stayed with it. They stayed with it. And we ended up digging that thing out of there um, and then going down. And, and uh, you know, uh, Marcus hits the pull up uh, on the other end to, to, to give us a lead. So, uh, you know, that, that speaks to who we are. And this team is, uh, they fought all year. Obviously, defensively, we've made great strides uh, this season. And we needed it today uh, because Santa, Cal Santa Barbara is a, a terrific defensive team, so offense was hard to come by. Uh, so we were go going to have to defend if we, w if we expected to win this game. All right, our next question comes from John with the World Herald. Yeah, Greg. Um, I mean, Christian mentioned he's put in a lot of time at the free throw line in practice, and you did too. Can you take us inside the, the walls there? Like, how much is a lot? You know, how, how often do you see him working on that? It, and, uh, you know, just how, 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 do, how do you work on that? You know, that, that it's just a, it's such a mental part of the game. Yeah, you know, we, we put him in situations in practice, uh, you know, at least when we had normal practice before we went into this bubble three weeks ago or whatever it was, uh, where he'd have to make it at the end of practice, you know, for us to end practice or not have any conditioning or something like that. And uh, so he's been in some situations like that, but he spends a lot of time on his own uh, in the gym getting work in. And it's been a little bit more difficult uh, because your practice times are assigned here. Uh, but when he's had the opportunities to go over to the gym for extra shooting, he's gotten there and he's made, he's made sure that free throws is a part of that routine uh, because you just never know. You, know, you never know when you're going to be in a situation like that and you know especially a one on one one and -on one uh, where you got to have that first one uh, to give ourselves a chance so you know really really proud of him for the work that he's put in and uh, you know it takes a lot takes a lot of moxie to I don't care how good a free good or bad free throw shooter you are to step up in that situation and you know I don't think he hit the rim on either one is really a credit to to his preparation and the fact that he stayed with himself. Next question comes from Russo. Hey, Greg, Ralph Russo from the Associated Press. You know, I know you're probably a little tired of talking about what a weird three weeks it's been, but it has been a really weird three weeks for your team, even going back to getting blown out in the Big East Championship game. You know, to win a game with this kind of resilience, does it say something about your team? Yeah, you know, we won we won a game very similar to this in the semis of the Big East tournament against a very good UConn team. And it was you know, it was a it was a game much like today where every possession mattered. And, you know, as you mentioned, we we've been through a lot and the reason we've been through a lot is on me. And and I've had to work to to repair uh, you know, some of those relationships of the people that I hurt, some inside the program, some outside the program. And that's, that process is just beginning. It's not, it's not just, I mean, it's just beginning. Uh, I mean, it's certainly not even close to over. Uh, this is really just a start for me of, of trying to become uh, a better version of myself moving forward. And uh, I, I, I appreciate the fact uh, that our guys, you know, had it in their hearts uh, to forgive me. Uh, and allow us to move on together, uh, but you know there's still there's still a lot of work to do, and I recognize that. And uh, you know I'm going to continue to work as hard as I can for him. All right, our next question comes from Matt. Hey Mac, I don't know. <laughs> I'm just going to go way way back in the way back machine here, but I remember you know those summers after that 2018 2019 season when this group was really young. Um, you and the staff and everybody were really stressing to the guys about, you know, the little things in those one possession games that had cost you that year so many times that you felt like could be shored up. The, the games you've won this season, the game against UConn, the Big East semi, the game today, did, did all of that, was that the origin for all of that and just getting the guys to understand the value of each possession in games like this? I, I think the older you get as you, as you kind of navigate your way through a college career, uh, the more you understand the value of each possession and and how 
what your contribution means to that possession. And, you know, sometimes it's an offensive possession where you don't touch the ball, but proper spacing is important or a proper screen is important or a proper pass is important. And defensively, you know, you may not be guarding the ball or the guy that's being screened, but you have a responsibility and you have a job to do. And, and this team, as they've gotten older, uh, understands that more. And, uh, you know, that was evident today because we, we, we had some very good defensive possessions um, against a, a really good offensive team. Next question comes from John Fanta. Greg, to that point, how much did Mitch Ballock embody that possession of possession <clears throat> mentality approach throughout this game? You know, what's great about Mitch is, you know, he, he made several – great plays at the rim uh, in help situations, uh, you know, got his hands on some basketballs in the paint and knocked them loose, got a couple big rebounds. And, you know, he didn't shoot it, he didn't shoot it great. Um, but he found other ways to impact the game. Yet, when I decided to make the move to take him out those last minute or minute and a half to, to go with Sharif for defense, he doesn't even give me a look. You know, he, he totally trusts uh, in, in our decisions and, and, and the reasons behind the decisions. And you know, that's hard for me to do, to take a guy out that I trust as much as I trust Mitch. Uh, but Mitch just wants to win. And that's all he's wanted since he's walked on this campus. And you know, long after he's gone from here and when he's still playing, uh, that's all that's going to matter to him is, you know, I just I want us to be successful. And us could be a family, us could be a business, us could be him involved in a coaching staff, coaching a team. Uh, the guy is selfless, and he doesn't care about himself. He just wants the people around him to be successful and in the, in the, in the organization that he's part of to be successful. And uh, he's a big reason why we're standing here today. Our next question comes from John with the World Herald. <clears throat> Greg, this kind of ended up to be a little inconsequential because you won, but you've done such a good job, you know, with, with your rotations and your hedging in terms of that ball screen against McLaughlin. But like their last three possessions, they did find the, the big man, Sal. And I just wonder what you saw there. Was it a breakdown? Was it just a tweak that they made to get the, get the ball in quickly? No, I think, I think we got a little scared of giving something up in the corner. And, and we, we probably didn't pull to that roll man the way we needed to. And I've got to watch it on film before I rush to any conclusions. Um, but I, I thought our help was a little late. I thought the guy in the ball and I thought Christian did, did what they were supposed to do. Um, we, just, we just didn't cover him up the way that we needed to cover him up. And in that situation, you, you, know, you don't want to be the guy that gives up an open shot. But uh, back to what I was talking before, you have a responsibility. And you have to do your job. And, and, and if they kick it out to a guy that is not a great shooter and he hits it to beat you, then you have to live with that. But you don't want to give up those layups. And you know, like I said, we we were uh, we were lucky, and uh, and you know, we we had a we had a great fan that passed away uh, six or seven weeks ago. That Christian was her favorite player. Betty Walker was her name, and and uh, I think she slapped that layup out of the rim. And I'm pretty sure she uh, steered Christian's two free throws into the basket as well from heaven today. All right, our final question comes from Matt. I feel really bad asking my question after that, but uh, um, you, you kind of assured us earlier in the week that Denzel would, would, was closer to getting his mojo back than maybe the, the statistics had outlined. I just wonder, was it deliberate on your part to get him touches in that, on that first possession of the first half and second half to get him going and kind of get him – I don't know, some positive momentum for the assignments he was going to have to do defensively today? Well, we, we, liked, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. we liked some of the matchups uh, with him in the post. So that's why we started. You know, we had one possession the first half where we got him down there and he scored. And uh, we felt we could start the second half that way uh, and get a basket to put us, put us up six or get him to the free throw line. Uh, but <clears throat> the three he had to start was more just in the, you know, in the flow of our offense. They, they were tagging out of that corner. Um, that happened to be him that was in that spot wide on that one. And, and Marcus made the right play, if I'm not mistaken, and delivered the ball. And, and you know, he had an open shot. So, you know, a lot of, a lot of guys contributed. You know, Marcus gets eight assists and 17 points. And, you know, Christian gets a double-double. And, you know, De Mitch gets seven rebounds. And, you know, right on down the line, uh, we had a lot of contributions from a lot of guys. But 18, 18 assists and eight turnovers against a team as good defensively as they are. Um, is really a credit to our guys. 
All right, that's it. Thank you, Coach, for Thank your you. time, and best of luck in the next round. Thanks. That's it for this post-game news conference. A transcript of the coach's interview will be provided by ASAP Sports at www.ncaa.com slash transcripts. You can also find a recording of this press conference in the NCAA Digital Media Hub at www.ncaa.baritone.com. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for participating today. We will now begin with an opening statement from Coach Joe Pasternak and then go to questions. Use the raise hand feature to indicate you would like to ask a question. When you're called on for your question, please state your name and affiliation first as Coach cannot see you on the screen. Um, Coach, please give us a brief opening statement and then we will go ahead to questions. Well, we played a heck of a basketball team today. We have so much respect for Creighton. They had a really, really good season. They're very, very well coached. They're very difficult to play against. And I thought our guys competed as well as we can compete and really had a chance at the end to win it. A couple details down the stretch hurt us, but I was very proud of our guys' effort. Thanks, Coach. You mentioned it. Obviously not the result you guys wanted today, but just talk about how proud you are of your team, how they competed today, and how they competed all season to get to this point. Yeah, I just got finished talking to our guys, and it's a very difficult time for all of them and our whole staff because, you know, the game was right there for us, and this game can't define our season. Our players did such an amazing job through off the court with COVID, on the court, competing for championships, being the first uh, conference championship since 2003, sole championship getting the conference tournament championship. And it was an unbelievable historical season for UCSB. And it's a tough way to go down today. Can you talk a little bit about your team's experience here in Indianapolis, obviously playing in kind of a different looking tournament this year with all the games in Indiana. Just talk about maybe some positives from, from that experience for your team. Well, I tell you what, the NCA, their planning is unbelievable. And I think uh, it's to their credit, Dan Gavitt's credit, for the leadership and how detailed they have things so there could be an NCAA tournament. And I was just fortunate, and our team is so grateful to have been involved in such a historical event. Obviously a tight game throughout, but just not able to pull it pull it out down the stretch. Is there any one one or two things that you noticed really um, that kind of prevented you guys from being able to get the win today? You know, I thought they had some really key offensive rebounds that hurt us, especially the one at the end. Um, last four minutes of the first half, they scored 11 points, and I think that really hurt us. But we held Creighton in the second half to 29 points, and that's really tough to do. Um, credit to them. They're a great team, great coaching staff. They do a great job. And looking forward into next year, what are some positives you think your program can really take from, from this experience here? Well, I think our guys got a taste of winning championships, going to the NCAA tournament, and I don't think anybody's satisfied. We weren't happy just to be here. We wanted to advance, and I think there will be a hunger, a chip on our shoulder moving forward. Any other questions for Coach? All right, one from Austin Montgomery. Austin, go ahead with your question, please. Hey, Coach. Uh, Austin Montgomery from Mid Major Madness. I just kind of want to talk uh, about that run at the end of the second half. Earlier, Ja'Cory wasn't really get going. He was doubled off the screens. What were some adjustments you made to help get them the ball and get your team going? Well, I thought we set some more off-the-ball screens so he wouldn't be doubled, and um, I thought that really helped him. Any additional questions for Coach? Thank you so much for your time today, Coach. We will be joined momentarily by Ja'Cory McLaughlin. Please use this time to raise your hand if you have questions for Ja'Cory. Thank you.
We are now joined by Ja'Cory McLaughlin and we'll begin the press conference. Please use the raise hand function to indicate you'd like to ask a question. And when you're called on, please state your name and affiliation first so Ja'Cory knows who's asking questions. Um, we will start first with a question from Austin Montgomery. Uh, hey, Ja'Cory, I'm Austin from Mid-Major Mattis. I just want to talk just about that last play where you able to make the extra pass to so there. What were you seeing uh, when you got when they uh, trapped you in that situation? Can you just kind of take us through that play? Yeah, I was looking to come off and uh, and, and shoot it, but they were they were on me, double team me, and uh, Amdu was wide open, so just made the right pass right there, and he's money in the paint. And then can you just and then again, can you just kind of tell us just like how they were defending you early? You only took two shots in the first half because. It puts so much emphasis emphasis on you. Like, what was your um, just during the game? What was your um, attitude? Just like getting the extra pass, and what adjustments did you make earlier when you had to get um, points for your team later on? Yeah, I think just early in the game, uh, just double me off ball screens and things like that, being aggressive off cuts. So uh, later in the game, just being more aggressive when I catch the ball on the one more pass and things like that, coming off the screen, not just looking to pass. So uh, just being more aggressive in the second half was was my game plan. And then just kind of just describe this like whole experience for you. You had a, I, I know the season didn't end the way you guys wanted it to, but you're uh, AP All American honorable mention. You guys made the tournament for the first time in a decade. You won a Big West championship. Just kind of describe like, what this senior year has been for you and your teammates. Yeah, yeah, it's been great for me for my teammates. Uh, we started in the summer on Zooms on the tennis courts and just we put a lot of work in as a team so it was great to, to be able to get here it didn't it didn't end like we wanted it to but uh i love this team for and they're my brothers for life i think thank you can you talk a little bit jacory just about your experience here in indianapolis um what it's been like really playing in this unique environment yeah yeah uh all in the same hotel uh, we got our own rooms, things like that. Uh, kind of just been in the in the hotel the whole time, but it's been a great experience for me and my team. Uh, just being able to get here and sharing this experience, and uh, like I said, it didn't end the way we wanted to, but it was a great experience uh, coming here. Can you talk about what it means to you in your senior season to have this kind of run, make it to the tournament, and make such an impact really on the future of the program at UC Santa Barbara? Yeah, it uh, it means a lot to me and my teammates, just all the work that we put in to get here. And uh, these were some of our goals that we had, and uh, it just feels really great to uh, be able to get to this point. Any additional questions for Ja'Cory? Thank you so much, Ja'Cory, for your time. That's it for this post-game news conference. A transcript of the coach's interview will be provided by ASAP Sports at www.ncaa.com slash transcripts. You can also find a recording of this press conference in the NCAA Digital Media Hub at www.ncaa.veritone.com. Thank you all for joining us.